Layers. So what the layers knob does on Blooper is it allows you to control eight levels of undo and redo. You do have more than eight layers of recording possible, but anything beyond that eighth layer is just lumped into it. It's one big clump of layers. That's the really fast explanation. I'm gonna record a loop real quick and we'll see how it works. Oh, and I have my external foot switch going so I can record with my body and record. That's the first layer. That's the second layer. Okay, so I've recorded four layers, and now with this knob, I can navigate quickly between them. There's my second. There's my third. There's my final. The final one's kind of bad, so let's take it out. Don't need it. That one's kind of bad too. It's not a great loop. There's so much to talk about with layers. The knob is always evenly divided up into, into quadrants or zones so that, you know, if you only have two layers, they're not like cramped in the front range of the knob. So it's basically constantly resizing itself so that each slice is an equal size. The second thing that we did with the layers knob is that it, it goes to sleep um, when you're doing things. What that means is that you don't have to be too conscious about where it's set or worry about it like sticking on a particular layer when you're just trying to go further. So, you know, you, if I have it here on layer two, if I go forward and record three, four, five more layers, you're not gonna be stuck on layer two and only hearing layer two, you're gonna go with it. Now, what's important to know about the layers feature is that it doesn't isolate layers, okay? So you're not getting just layer two, and you can't edit just layer two, for example. You're getting the layer that you're on and everything before that, um, because it's, it's basically an extension of undo and redo. Um, so what that means, for example, is that right now I'm back on the second layer. If I was to record right now, my third and fourth layers would get swept away, and I would be you know, going forward from that point. Uh, just like undo redo on any other looper. So that's the basic functionality of layers. And a little reminder that the layers knob and the undo redo submenu, which we talk about in the foot switch episode, they're identical. They are the same thing, um, so you can access these features either of those ways. It's the same. So the ability to quickly undo and redo is the point of layers, but as we discovered when you put all the pieces together, it can actually do more than that. So I'll do a quick example of what I mean by that. We're going to turn down the repeats. I can't play in many keys with three fingers. I'm learning. Okay. So I'm going to tell you what I just did imminently, but first I'm going to show you what it sounds like. Not the best example, um, but on we go. What's important about how the layers knob works is, or the layers feature, a new layer is only created when you go from recording to playback. Okay, so it has no relation to the loop resetting. It's a conscious decision to go from record to playback. And basically whatever you hear at that moment where you press play, that's what becomes the layer. So if you're using it with the repeats knob and allowing all the old material to fade away to silence, you're only gonna hear that new thing. It's a completely new, unrelated if you want idea. 
to what came before. So what that has allowed me to do here is kind of record these independent samples, these strange chords or melodies alternating between C and G, and go back and forth between them. This allows you to get into this whole other behavior where you can use the layers knob to record parts, or you can use it to collect samples, which is kind of what we did in this case. You can even kind of use it to record tracks. I'll show you right now. Let's start over. <laughs> I'm gonna start with repeats up in this case. created three layers. Now, I'm going to turn repeats down, let it go away, and now I'll record something else with a different key. Turn repeats up again, do the same thing. Okay. So now what I have in there is two completely separate ideas that both go from the two separate three layer ideas, essentially. Chords, melody, emotional melody, random notes. Now, kind of reset, now it's a G chord. So two different three layer ideas that I created separately by moving around the repeats knob as I create layers. You can think of it like this. Whenever, whatever you're hearing at the moment you go from record to play, that's gonna become a layer. It's that simple. And how you choose to manipulate that and move that around is, is actually bottomless. And uh, yeah, that's how you can use layers for things. Manipulating this when you have lots of inf interesting information in there, sound information, uh, is great. It's really cool, and you can use MIDI or CV to make that precise or, you know, whatever. Connect it to your music however you please. Um, or you can just, you know, get it ramping, for example. And I'm going to do random ramping right now. So, does that sound good? That's up to you. It's a thing you can do. And this is without taking advantage of any of the modifiers or stability, so. I guess the only other thing to mention is that um, you can undo and redo anything that you can record with Blooper. Meaning that if you're, if you're recording effects, which we're going to get into in, in detail soon, you can still undo all of that. So even if you've recorded a loop that you love, you can, you can boldly tear it apart and, and still go back eight times and it'll be cool, it'll be fine. Um, so that's layers. 